All right, in this video, we are going to um, introduce you to the operating room environment, and then um, what we do is we'll go over the uh, anesthetic cart that's in most rooms. So this is your standard operating room theater. We happen to be at VGH for this particular one, and this happens to be OR uh, 15. So why don't we just walk in the doors? For some of you will already be familiar with the operating room environment, and some of you won't. So um, for those that aren't, we'll just have a quick orientation to what's in here. And this, this is essentially what most operating rooms look like. Of course, centrally located, you've got the uh, operating room bed on which the patient uh, was placed. There's usually an area uh, in which anesthesia takes care of its business, and you've got an anesthetic machine. Um, for the sake of this video, we have moved the anesthetic cart into a central location so we can go over it. This cart is usually found next to the anesthetic uh, machine. Um, other things of note are essentially that there's always a lot of equipment around an operating room and there's usually a lot of tables set up at the opposite end of the OR on which um, the operating equipment is placed in a sterile fashion. And I guess that's one important point when you walk into an operating room, uh, you should always have um, a mask on, you should have a hat, um, and you should always be cognizant of what is sterilely set up and what needs to be avoided. Uh, try not to walk into anything that uh, is sterile so that as to break that sterility, the nurses will get quite angry at you. But what we do is we'll go over the anesthetic cart. This is always an area where when a student walks in and does anesthesia, uh, they're not that familiar with how a cart is set up. And then if you were a little bit more familiar with it, you'd be able to uh, at least know what the staff person that you're with is talking about and where to find everything. First thing to note is, that I guess, that the cart is different uh, at every location that you'll be at. Um, however, there's probably some common themes, and of course, me working at uh, Vancouver General Hospital, I'm familiar with VGH's carts, so we'll be walking through that. Um, I would suggest you take a moment, though, at your facility to go over your cart and see what the differences and what the similarities are between what I explained to you today and uh, what your cart is at the location that you are at. The other thing to realize is that in most locations, the carts are the same in every room. So we're here in operating room 15. If I happen to be called to operating room uh, 3 later in the day, I can expect that I have an identical cart in that room. So I'm very familiar with how it's laid out. And that's to prevent any uh, mistakes from happening, from me drawing up things that, uh, that I shouldn't be drawing up or not knowing where equipment is. Okay. So the overview of the cart is essentially that we have five drawers and a bunch of intravenous fluid at the bottom. Um, the top basically is created so that we have an open space in the middle in which we can draw up our drugs, we can lay out our drugs, lay out our airway equipment if that's what we choose to do. Uh, the equipment that basically surrounds that open space is um, sort of a hodgepodge of different things. We've got uh, gauzes. We have these special saline syringes. These are 10 cc syringes of normal saline, uh, sterile in a package. And these are used to dilute down many medications. Uh, examples would be ephedrine, examples would be hydromorphone. With 10 cc's you're able to dilute it down into the appropriate volume and uh, label it and note what the concentration is. We have um, alcohol wipes located. There's always usually a pair of scissors. Uh, for intravenous starts, we have a Penrose drain. This is latex. I'll be very uh, cognizant of that for patients that we have that are latex allergic. On the right side of the cart, we have a Sharps container. And um, one central theme in anesthesia is to never uh, use Sharps more than you need to and always dispose of your Sharps, and that's the, that container is for. We have labels. and. In another video, we'll go over how to draw up drugs and uh, the appropriate way of labeling uh, medications, and I'll just sort of use that system that I tend to use. But for now, just be aware that there are labels. There is a bit of a pattern to the color coding and uh, what is what color, but we won't worry about that right now. Okay, so if we turn to the drawers, um, first thing we notice is that there are labels on all the drawers, basically describing what it is that is within each drawer. And I would, I'm not going to go over them now for the sake of time, but once again, when you first uh, come in and have a look at the cart, go over the labels and see what is in each one. I'm going to start by opening the top drawer. The top drawer, as labeled, is drugs. There's a lot of drugs here, and for the sake of this video, we're not going to go over every drug in detail. And this is an area where every um, hospital in the Lower Mainland is going to have a different setup of drugs within uh, their cart. 
A few uh, big ones that we need to be aware of are uh, the white vials here off to the right is propofol. Propofol is a very standard induction drug that we use. You're going to be using a lot of propofol, so be familiar with where that is. Muscle relaxants are usually kept near the propofol, and in this case we have two types. We have succinylcholine and we have rocuronium kept on the cart. If you need other types of muscle relaxation, they are usually found in a more central location, uh, an, an anesthetic uh, workroom. We keep our local anesthetics in this area as well. So we've got xylocaine and we've got marcaine, examples of local anesthesia. Um, we have some saline bags that we can use to dilute medications. On the left hand side, we have drugs that tend to be associated more with hemodynamics. And by that I mean uh, the need to raise blood pressure, lower blood pressure, raise heart rate, lower heart rate. So we see beta blockers like labetalol and metoprolol. We see cardiac lidocaine. We see medications that raise uh, blood pressure and raise cardiac output. And included in that would be ephedrine and uh, norepinephrine, otherwise known as levofed. And way at the back here, we have epinephrine. Epinephrine is one that I think you should be familiar with, with uh, its location on the cart for two reasons. Obviously, one, if epinephrine is needed, one needs to know how to get at it fast. Number two, it is extremely dangerous to use epinephrine in a patient who does not really need epinephrine. Um, and so you definitely do not want to draw up epinephrine uh, mistakenly and give it to a patient mistakenly. So always be aware of where that is. We have on this side of the cart, we have atropine and glycopyrrolate. So two examples of anticholinergics uh, that can be very useful for somebody who is experiencing uh, dramatic bradycardia. Okay, so let's move on to the second drawer. The second drawer contains syringes, needles, uh, and this is how we're going to be drawing up our medications. On the right-hand side, we see um, IVs, uh, and the intravenouses, the cannulas for intravenous insertion come in different sizes, and I would suggest you take a few moments uh, someday with us to go over the sizes and understand the color coding of the sizes, because the color coding is fairly universal. Uh, and understand the differences in flow rate between the sizes of the cannulas. We have different sized uh, syringes, 20 gauges, 10 gauges, 5 cc's. At the back of the cart, uh, the back of this drawer, we have spinal needles. Once again, I'd suggest by the end of two weeks you should be fairly comfortable with the different types of spinal needles and the different sizes of spinal needles used for spinal anesthesia. In the third drawer, we have equipment needed to put in an intravenous and to connect different types of intravenous lines. So we've got um, extension tubing, three-way stopcocks, we've got lines used for infusions, and then we have some other specialized uh, equipment such as arterial uh, line catheters, and that will be, we'll go over arterial lines in another video. Next drawer down is a very important drawer, and this is our airway equipment drawer. Everything that you want, essentially, for airway equipment is going to be found in this drawer. And this includes, off to the left here, laryngoscopes. And in this particular instance, we've got MAC blades. This is a MAC 3 blade. There should be two in there. There's two MAC 4 blades. And there is two laryngoscope handles. When you come in in the morning, you may want to check your handles and make sure that they actually work. And that is done by putting one of the blades onto the handles. We have oropharyngeal airways at the back. We have nasopharyngeal airways. We have off to the right uh, eye padding. We have lidojet sprays that put lidocaine down the trachea. And a very important piece of equipment here, we have a stylet. So a stylet is used to get a endotracheal tube into a hockey stick position for those instances where uh, during laryngoscopy we are unable to get the tube around the corner under the epiglottis and into the trachea. Our lower drawer, the last drawer, essentially contains all our big equipment. So, first thing to note is that all our um, endotracheal tubes are in this drawer. So we have got our standard tracheal tubes of various sizes. The biggest size that we keep in this drawer is an 8.5. The smallest is a 6. Most women will tend to get a 7.5 tube, and most men will tend to get a size 8 tube, with some variation. But uh, essentially most of them receive that size. 
There is IV tubing in here, and in another video we will talk about how to set up uh, an intravenous line. There are other types of endotracheal tubes, and we're not going to go into a lot of detail about them, but this in particular is a, uh, a nasal ray tube. We have oral ray tubes, and um, I would suggest if you want to know more details about those types to discuss it with the staff that you're with. We have an arterial line set up for those uh, individuals that require an arterial line. And we have a blood set in which to set up blood to be given to a patient. And this has to go through a special warming unit. Once again, if you want more information about that, you can talk to your staff about it. There's also sterile gloves in here for sterile procedures, such as spinal anesthesia, epidural anesthesia, and uh, placement of central lines. Okay, finally, at the bottom of our cart, we have a selection of IV fluids. In the middle, we have colloids represented by two types that we carry here at VGH. One is known as Voluven, one is known as Pentaspan, and I'm not going to go into details about those now, uh, but those are your colloids. We also have crystalloids in various sized uh, bags. We have one liter bags here to the left and 500 cc bags here to the right. Uh, note that these bags are not heated beyond room temperature, of course, and a lot of our patients receive warm fluids uh, and they are usually kept in a warm environment in the core of most operating uh, theaters. So that essentially is the cart. At the end of the case, obviously there are some deficiencies to the cart because things have been used and in most instances uh, a lot of the staff around the uh, ORs will come in and they will refill, restock the cart for you. Here at VGH sometimes we rotate a fresh cart in so that when we come for our next case we should have a completely uh, stocked cart.